than hatred to mankind. Poisoning their brainwash minds. Oh, Lord, yeah. You listen to Live with Rank Radio Show, 441-9595. If you have a question for Congressman Justin Amash, Republican 3rd District is my guest in the House here. And, uh, well, good, real quickly, Brett's on the line. The line's open, 441-9595. If you have a thought, just played that song, War Pigs, due to the fact that we may be going to war against Syria. Uh, Congressman Amash, again, thank you for coming in today. Uh, real quickly, you have a town hall meeting today, correct? 5.30. 5.30, where at? It's going to be at the Miller Stone Building in Battle Creek. Miller Stone Building, 5.30 today, town hall meeting with Congressman Justin Omash. What are your thoughts on our pending attack on Syria, and should the president seek approval from Congress? Well, the president has to come back to Congress. It's it's required under the Constitution. It's required under the War Powers Resolution. Uh, people who talk about uh, the president getting uh, 60 days under the War Powers Resolution, that's nonsense. Uh, if you read the first section of the War Powers Resolution, it's pretty clear. The president can't take our military to war under any circumstances unless there's a defensive response to an attack on the United States. Uh, so if there was some kind of uh, imminent attack or some real attack on the United States, sure, he can go to war um, to protect us, but he can't just make a decision to go to war when there's no real threat. That has to go through Congress. So the War Powers Act, so the 60 days that we all hear of the, for a police action, quote unquote, is only if we're being attacked. That's right. Yeah, and it's or it's, consta- it's constantly misinterpreted. Uh, I think sometimes it, uh, people are intentionally uh, trying to mislead people about this. But the 60 days is if the uh, if the president has called people into action because of a defensive action. So if we were under attack and the president put troops on the ground somewhere or started to do military strikes somewhere, he could do that for 60 days without getting approval. But that's only if it was a de- defensive response. That's not for offensive attacks like we have now. Well, that's very, very interesting. I got a 54-second a audio bit that I'm not going to play because I don't want to take the time up now that you're in here. President, excuse me, Vice President Biden, who back in 2007 said he was going to take Bush to or lead a, a, an impeachment theory, uh, an impeachment act on on President Bush if he was to do exactly what President Obama is looking to do. So I'm looking for, unless President, excuse me, why am I in making him president? Vice President Biden actually is uh, is uh, intellectually dishonest, and I, I, I wouldn't believe that, uh, then he should lead the impeachment against President Obama. Yeah, I mean, President Obama uh, should uh, maybe go after himself, because if you look at President Obama's quotes from a few years ago, he said the same thing. He He's saying what I'm saying, that it's unconstitutional for the president to take us to war unilaterally unless it's to repel attacks, unless it's a defensive measure. So both President Obama and uh, Vice President Biden have totally flipped their position on this now that they're in power. And no one will be held accountable for it. If you have a question for Congressman Amash, give us a call at 441-9595. Those of you north of Kalamazoo, 488-9595. We'll pay the toll on that. 269 is the area code. Brett, thanks for holding on. You're on the Live with Rank Show. Good morning. How are you? I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm not in a good mood today. So (laughs) (laughs) I'm nothing but truthful to you. Go ahead. Um, the last time the congressman was in there, he talked about bipartisanship and uh, Republicans and Democrats both being good and wanting to work together. Um, yeah, well, and, well, hold on. Uh, good and bad. There's plenty of bad going on. Yeah, well, okay, I can agree with you on the bad part. Um, yeah. I'm not going to agree with you on the good part. In fact, um, I know you don't know me. Um, Rank knows me. I'm a very staunch conservative. I'm probably so far on the right, I'm on your left. Um, but <laughs> there isn't one... Um, elected official in Washington, D.C. today that I feel like I can trust. And I don't think I'm the only one. I am really tired of politicians getting up there and telling everybody what Americans want. I don't think you guys have a clue what America, Americans want. Um, they get up there and they say all these different things about what they want to do and they blame it on the Americans as this is what they want to do. Nobody, I don't think there are very many people left out there that trust politicians anymore. Now, Rank knows I have the greatest.
greatest respect for the office, for the system. Imperfect as it is, it's still the best one out there. But the people that are sitting in those chairs, I don't have hardly any respect for at all anymore. And that includes uh, the people that I voted for. I'm just picking the yep. best of a bad lot. Um, so do you have a question in there, or was that just a comment? I think that is comment. a question. I'd like him to address that, because we don't get a chance to do this, ask politicians with straight talk like this um, anywhere at all. Yeah, well, you do at my town halls. I'll call pe- on people randomly at my town halls, so I don't, I don't restrict uh, who I who I call on, and I take all sorts of uh, challenging questions. But the the issue here is, sure, I don't I don't trust uh, most politicians either. The, one of the reasons I ran for office is because of my distrust of politicians and politics. And uh, when I got there, uh, I realized there was good reason for it. I'm actually more skeptical of government now than when I got into government. So when I first was elected, I was actually less skeptical. I'm now more skeptical, more cynical of politics. But at the same time, I recognize that there is a shift happening, uh, particularly in the Republican Party, with some of the new members. They're, they are more independent, and that is going to have a, a big payoff in the long run in terms of uh, getting better officials in office and and uh, getting some uh, better representation because no longer are people just kowtowing to whatever the leadership is is asking them to do. Um, Certainly there's a lot of that still going on, but amongst the younger people, the newer people elected, there is a big shift, and I think they are less concerned about that. Um, They're certainly not able to – to persuade me to do things by uh, through their arm twisting, I receive the fewest PAC donations of any member of Congress. Uh, I, I think maybe a couple thousand dollars last um, last quarter. So I don't really uh, receive contributions from the PACs. I don't have uh, committee assignments given to me because I'm doing anything for uh, leadership. So they've got nothing to take away from me, and um, I think that's that's true of a lot of of uh, the new members. They just don't care about. I think they already uh, did take your. Oh, uh, sure they did. Me, didn't they? Sure they did, but it, did, it, uh, did it change how I operate? Mm, I don't no. know. <laughs> you even went against the Tea Party. i got to go to a quick break. Thanks, yeah. Brad. I hope that helped out. Uh, against the Tea Party here in Michigan, and you are endorsing uh, Kelly for uh, lieutenant governor. We can talk about that right after this coming up. 4419595, if you have a question or a thought for Congressman Amash, give us a call. You listen live with Rank. We'll be right back after this. Here's a song I think may be an example or exemplify who and what you have experienced over the last year. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's home to me and I walk alone. I walk this empty street on the boulevard of broken dreams Where the city sleeps and I'm the only one I walk up my shadows Only one who walks beside me My shadow hearts the only thing that's beating Sometimes I wish someone up there You listen live with Rank Radio Show, and I do appreciate that. 4419595, Kalamazoo area north, 4889595, area code 269 if you have a thought. My guest is, and who I played that song for is Congressman Justin Omash. You were walking, you quite often walk alone, don't you, uh, Congressman? Great song. And you know, lately, you've been getting some people that are uh, other politicians that are backing you on some of this NSA stuff. Uh, so absolutely, you know, I know you get heat for walking alone. And the the biggest question I get from people is he's hurting our district. He's hurting our district. He's hurting our district, uh, by always being the opposition or always trying to oppose something, even though you tell you, tell people why you oppose well, it. Well, I'm independent and actually I vote yes. Most of the time, mm-hmm. the, uh, the fact is when I vote no, it tends to get more of the media attention because it, it tends to uh, differ from Republicans on, on that stuff. And I'm voting no, because I'm following the constitution. 
And well, why uh, would you do that? <laughs> and uh, no one else there is. That's what people want me to do. That's why I was elected. I was elected to follow the Constitution and and do what's right and represent the district and not just bow to uh, party leadership on everything. And uh, look, uh, congressional leadership, when you do, do polls of Congress, the approval rating is something like 10 percent. What's that an approval rating of? It's an approval rating of the direction leadership on both sides, Republican and Democrat, uh, Democratic leadership, are taking us. And if I'm going against that at times, I don't see that as a bad thing. Well, you know, I don't believe in that. Someone told me recently, and I agree with him, that uh, that's a baloney 10 percent figure because – Something like 90% of you get reelected. Yeah, but my point is the 10% is a figure representing what what do, what do people think about the yeah. direction Congress is taking. Well, that's, a, that's a polling of essentially party leadership on both sides. Right. I got you. And so it's not, a, it's not about independent representatives. All right, 441-9595, you have a thought. Dave, thanks for calling in and holding on. You're on the Live with Rank Show. I'd be happy to. And we've already delivered that message to our party leadership. Uh, we had a conference call uh, just recently uh, over this uh, August recess that we have. And one of the things we talked about on the conference call was how re- the Republican Party is losing people. And they're losing people because we don't stand for anything. We have to stand up for our principles, whether it's uh, fighting on Obamacare or on uh, making sure that our budget is balanced or on this NSA stuff, or on uh, Syria, the president taking us to war without any congressional authorization, we have to actually stand for things. And if we don't stand for things, I'm not surprised people don't want to vote for the Republican Party. I I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And uh, uh, really, we need more people like you up there. I I appreciate the job that you're doing, and I I thank you for your service, sir. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dave. In, In the sense that you explain why in your Facebook Every time you vote yes or no, you explain why, which I think yep. is, a, is a great thing that's in writing as opposed to things uh, being said. 441-9595, if you have a thought, you'd like to uh, have a question for Congressman Justin Omash, a Republican from the 3rd District. Shiloh, you're on air. Hey, how's it going, Rick? Good, thank you. I heard you. Did, were you on Geraldo's show a week or two ago? Yeah. And yeah, you didn't sure mention was. my name? Yeah. And you didn't mention my name? Uh, I should have, Rick. You, you really sorry. should have. I'm a little disappointed, but go ahead. What's your question? Uh, I just wanted to tell Justin that I also switched over to the Libertarian Party because I see what they're doing. They're actually standing by the Constitution. And the Republicans, uh, the GOP and all that, I don't trust it anymore. Yep. Well, Shiloh, I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I would say this. I'm a proud Republican. I believe the Republican Party can be changed. I think it can be uh, fix that can be turned around still. When I talk to some of my uh, newer colleagues, those who have just been just been elected over the last two cycles, we have a different take on things. Not all of us, but a lot of us have a different take on things than the party elders. So uh, I'm hoping that the party can still be saved. But we've sent the message to our own leadership that this party is going to fall apart if we don't do something now. Right. I mean, we saw it in the GOP when Ron Paul should have been our candidate. And for some reason, somebody had their hands in the pot and ruined everything for Ron Paul. Well, I think the the, the bottom line is there's too much uh, control at the top, whether you're at the conventions, whether Ron Paul would have won or not. That that's really remains to be seen. But the bottom line is uh, I, there have to be libertarians within the Republican Party. There's got to be a broad coalition. There's got to be other uh, Republicans, whether it's social conservatives and uh, military conservatives and other conservatives. We have, we've got to form a broad coalition here, and you can't try to exclude people, whether it's uh, libertarian types or, or others. 
You, you've right. got to you've got to get you've got to come together and you've got to stand on real conservative principles. That has to be the core of the party. Well, if you stand by the Constitution, Justin, I respect you for that, and I hope you keep doing a good job, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that. All right, Shiloh, thanks for your thought. I do appreciate that. We have Roger on the line, and to get to him right after this break. Hold on, line just opened up four four one nine five nine five. funny how when you go with the Constitution and do what the Constitution says, you're born to rebel. They think you're a rebel. That's that's what's funny. We're in my guest in the studio today is Congressman Justin Amash, Republican from the third district. He will be in well, you have a coffee yep. clutch. I'll have a coffee hour at Brownstone Coffee. That's three o'clock. Three o'clock coffee hour, and then at five thirty at the Millerstone building in downtown Battle Creek, you'll have a town hall meeting uh, let's go back to the phone lines roger you're on air good morning justin i do want you to know that uh, our family and our church pray for you uh effectively and fervently and for uh, your family in syria and we just pray that uh, you'll stand true to the principles that uh, we as a country were founded on and we pray for our leaders all our leaders that they will turn to the principles we are founded on and uh, thank you so much for what you do in washington thanks roger appreciate that yeah, you know, we don't get to see you that much, and with me being on the road a lot, I know you do town halls here in Hastings and with the uh, Perry County Patriots, and uh, we appreciate all that you and Jordan do to help us keep informed. So but, you had uh, a thought about going to war based on lies? You know, we went to war in the 60s over a lie. Um, that a little putt-putt boat attacked one of our big cruisers. And rather than just blowing it out of the water, we went into a full-blown war and lost 58,000 great Americans because of it. And uh, to me, I, having served there, we only went there because we had high unemployment, bad economics, and we had to invest our sons to get out of it. Well, now, so how? what are you comparing that to Syria right now, uh, yeah, Roger? Yeah, that, that potential is always there. We went to Iraq, and, uh, you know, we won a lot of battles, but I think we lost the war in Washington. All right. Thanks yeah. for your thoughts. Yeah, uh, Roger. I would say uh, your concerns are, uh, are are reasonable. I mean, the the fact is, the Constitution gives Congress the authority to declare war, to take us to war, to initiate military strikes. If you look at some of the uh, documents uh, that recorded the deliberations of the founders, you can see James Madison talking about this, saying that. Congress should have the authority to commence wars, to commence military attacks, but the president can uh, can repel attacks, can take defensive measures without Congress. And that's sure. the way it's supposed to be. And the, the reason for that is because we have uh, 435 representatives in the House and 100 senators, and we're supposed to be representing our constituents and, and hearing their voices on this issue. And when you look at a war like uh, going to Syria right now, the popularity for going to war in Syria is is lower, I think, than uh, people being spied on. People would rather be spied on than go to war in Syria. That's amazing to me. Uh, but that's how low the popularity is. And so the president and a lot of others, uh, like Senator McCain, they don't want a vote on this. They don't want to vote because they think it would fail. And I actually think it would fail. I think if you had a vote, people might not believe this, but if you had a vote in Congress, I believe it would fail. I believe we would not go to war. With Syria. Well, we, with Syria. Yeah, we got, we got burned on the Iraq-Afghanistan thing, and I think people, you know, the hands are too close to the burners yet. Yep. And, Unle uh, unless the I, president can make a convincing case, which right. which he hasn't made yet. Right. All right, yeah, Roger, Mike, thanks. Mike, Go ahead I, real quickly. I was just going to say, Michael Savage had a fellow on who has worked covertly over in the Middle East, and he said that a lot of that poison gas thing was staged just to get us into a war. Oh, Michael, okay, thanks, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Savage, okay. Uh 
I guess the question is this. What do we do when we see them gassing these well, people? Well, the, the, the it tears bomb, at us, yeah. Americans. There's all sorts of atrocities being committed there, both by the government and by the rebels. you got to remember the rebels are also allied with al-Qaeda. So right. if, you, if, you're siding with the gov- if you're siding with the rebels, you're siding with al-Qaeda. So it, there's no winning there. There's right. no winning there. Uh, there. There comes a certain point, of course, uh, where uh, things get so bad they spiral out of control and it becomes a real concern to the U.S., well, that's when you, you send troops in, but you've got to then go to Congress to get the authorization. Well, let's see what happens. Let's go to the next phone call. Donna, thanks for holding on. You're on air. you got about a minute. Hey, okay, just real quickly to Congressman Amash. It just feels to me, and I've called Rankin said this a couple of other times, it feels to me like in this country the Republicans are now sitting back and doing nothing. You hear nothing from most of them anymore. What do we do at this point, Congressman Amash? Do we just throw our hands up and give up and no. let it all happen because that's how it feels at this point. No, don't give up. Speak up. The uh, People underestimate how effective they can be by calling their representatives. I say this all the time, and people always tell me, you know, it doesn't do anything. My rep doesn't care. I am telling you they care. They will listen because they're afraid of not being reelected. So if you if you put in if you can round up people to make 100 phone calls on an issue, you will switch a representative's mind on something. It makes a big, big difference, much more well, than people realize. But where are they at this point? Why are we not hearing anything from the Republicans on any of this? And why are they sitting back on the health care issue? Why are we not going to defund that? Well, I, I don't know why they're not going to. De- I'm going to vote to defund it, so I, I will not support any appropriations that fund Obamacare. All right, Donna, sorry, got to go. You. We can take this up uh, tomorrow or on Friday. Uh, my guest is Congressman Justin Amash, Republican 3rd District. Thank you very much for coming in. You have a town hall meeting today at 530 at Miller Stone Beating Building and downtown Battle Creek and a coffee. A coffee hour at Brownstone Coffee at 3 o'clock. Good luck. Keep up the good fight. You listen to Live with Rank. We'll do it all again tomorrow at 9 a.m.